Uh, hi everyone. Um, thanks loads to Zena and Miller for organising the session today. It's really great to be here. Great to see everybody in the room as well. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Louise Fowler. I work for MOLA, Museum of London Archaeology, who are, well, we're a charitable company. Um, most of the work that we do is developer funded um, projects that are happening through um, during construction. Um, but we're also an independent research organisation. We do carry out research and we have a really big engagement team as well. So community engagement is really important to us. Um, and we're working on this project at the moment, the Zangal Archaeology Project, um, together with partners at Oxford University, Sarah Mallet, who's worked on the land exhibition there, um, to record this group of objects that were collected by a photographer, Gideon Mendel, at the site of the Calais jungle camp, which was demolished in 2016. Um, and I think it might seem a bit odd to some people in the room, probably, that are, what, what's essentially a developer-funded archaeological practice is engaging um, in work with these objects. Um, and I wanted to take the opportunity today, to really, to have discussions with all of you about some of the ethical questions that we have and we continue to have around um, working with these objects um, and their their history um, as well. So um, I'd like to maybe start, I mean these are some of our images that we've taken during the recording process, but um, the objects themselves were collected by Gideon um, after he'd initially gone to the camp um, to work um, with people who were displaced, who were living in the camp, um, to use photography, to teach them photography so that they could record their own experiences. But photography was really contentious within the jungle camp. Um, there were no, it wasn't an official refugee camp, so anybody could wander in and take photographs. Um, and there was a lot of <coughs> anger, resentment um, about the use of cameras in the camp, because not only were journalists coming in, um, taking photographs and bringing back, you know, putting critical stories into the media. Um, there was also the parallel issue that people within photographs could be identified at a later date um, and that could have an impact on asylum claims in the UK if people did get to, to Britain. Um, and all of this together led to Gideon saying um, he wasn't going to take photographs there anymore. Um, and as parts of the camp were demolished, he began to collect material instead. Um, he didn't have... Um, he wasn't working with people to collect material, he was just... Um, it, yeah, it was, as bits of the camp were demolished, he was going around and, and taking up what had been left behind. So it isn't a collection that's been made in conjunction with displaced people in the camp. Um, he brought the material back to the UK. Um, he photographed it here and he had an exhibition at the Autograph ABP Gallery in East London um, in 2018, um, which comprised of his photographs and of um, the material as well, the objects. So uh, I'll show you some of his images here. Um, and he, he photographed objects in very kind of regular almost archaeological groupings um, against this really lush black backgrounds. They were very aesthetic images. Um, they were intended to provoke emotional responses from the people who saw them. Um, and there wasn't much context um, given either. Um, and this exhibition is what led us to hear about what Gideon had been doing, um, and our new CEO invited him to come speak to us at MOLA, um, and it transpired that he didn't really have anywhere to keep all of this material, and we were interested as well in um, looking at it to see if there was a way that we could engage with this material as archaeologists, um, partly because we were interested in thinking about how we as archaeologists 
engage in cultural production, how we create pasts, um, and perhaps by looking at this very different material, could it help us to think differently about how we do our more traditional archaeological work? Um, so we had a workshop um, with MOLA staff uh, where we looked at some of the material with Gideon. Um, actually, I think Gideon was there for this one. But anyway, we had a workshop, um, and these are some of the questions that were raised by staff, some of the things that came up. So people were asking about whether collecting objects were any diff was any different really from taking photographs because you could still say what you like about the objects. There's no, you know, how is it different from photography? Um, they were concerned about how Gideon might have not collected things objectively, that he had an activist agenda, so he was specifically collecting things or photographing things that might have um, an, an impact on people. Um, and they were also concerned about context, um, because it didn't have an archaeological stratigraphic context, and people were kind of a bit confused about how we would do archaeology without having that, because I think that, that's quite an interesting <coughs> comment and question maybe we can come back to uh, later. Um, uh, and people were also quite concerned about whether this was useful in any way, um, and um, how it could be seen that we were spending money on doing this work when the money could be being spent actually helping people in Calais, so what, what the aim of the project was. Anyway, um, we ended up with these two aims for the project, um, and so the first of the aims was to contribute to this understanding of human relationships um, that are characterising the migrant crisis in Calais, and then the second one was this sort of, um, other aim to try and understand, to try and use this material to understand um, how we look at more traditional archaeological assemblages um, and how we engage in cultural production. Um, and in order to kind of address this second aim, we've been taking part in a post-excavation assessment of the material. So that's involved recording it in quite a... We've had to amend some of our methodologies. So normally for a post-excavation assessment, we would record and quantify the material that came from an excavation. Um, in this case, we've photographed everything and we tried to photograph... Uh, oh no, go back. Um, photograph how it came to us as well, how Gideon had collected it. So that's quite an important part of it for us is to think about how to not see the story ending with the site. The story kind of continues and the material is here. Um, and in some ways, it's like a kind of archaeology of response um, in a way, because it's Gideon's response. And a lot of the objects you'll see as well are um, things that come from a place of um, responding to the migrant crisis. Um, that first aim, though, the one about contributing to this understanding of human relationships, how am I doing for time? Am I okay? Oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> <that. laughs> okay. Um, actually, initially, was a different aim, and um, I thought I would put this up here. Um, we changed it. We decided that this aim we felt uncomfortable with, um, so this was about enabling archaeology to contribute to an understanding of the lived experience of a contemporary marginalised group of people and the wider systems and sets of relationships that connect us and them, but not in a you know, recognising, I suppose, that us and them are just um, are not necessarily useful categories, but they're how things are portrayed in the media in this um, instance. Um, and we felt awkward about this sense of the archaeology actually being able to talk about the lived experience of a group of people when the material hasn't really been collected in conjunction with them, when there are, you know, there are lots of other avenues through which people can find out about how conditions were in Calais. Um, and so we, we amended the same um, trying to understand all these different human relationships. And partly that was through looking at the material as well um, and understanding that we had just 
this chaotic mix of um, objects that you know, I think initially we'd, we'd sort of assumed that all of this material was going to be things that belonged to refugees that had been left behind. Um, but as we began to look at it, we realised that a lot of the material was actually things that had been donated from Britain and from elsewhere in Europe that had come to the camp. Um, there's a plate down at the bottom here which comes from the Royal Academy of Art, which was donated. Um, there was a huge over-donation of things for, for children and toys and things like that. So we find a lot of things for the children and partly I think Gideon's collected those things because they have an emotive power as well. So understanding like how what we have represents people who were there. So, you know, there was this huge complex set of relationships that we really have to understand in order to make sense of that. Um, and so we felt that this kind of aim to kind of get the lived experience was something that was going to be tricky or not easy to do with this material. So that was something that we put to one side. Um, and I think for me, um, the potential of this to change the way that we look at our more traditional archaeological projects has been really um, influential. It has. <laughs> uh, it has changed the way I look at things. Um, and it's definitely changed the way that I think about chronological narratives of sites because we do a lot of the work that we do as part of the developer funded process is constructing these historical narratives for sites. Um, and this has really opened up for me that we should be looking much more widely. Um, so yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.